got another batch of past exam questions on electrode potentials you can test yourself with. So, as always, the link to the questions is in the description of the video. So just click on that, have a go at the questions, and then play the video for the answers. Okay, so question one, we've got to draw the diagram for the cell that enables us to be able to measure this um, standard electrode potential. So it's obviously put against the standard hydrogen electrode. So in terms of the diagram, we need the hydrogen electrode on one side. So that's your platinum electrode, your H plus ions, aqueous, your hydrogen gas going in. And then that's then linked to the iron electrode on the other side, dipping into a solution of Fe2 plus ions. Two solutions connected by the salt bridge. And in terms of the standard conditions, we need a temperature of 298 Kelvin. The pressure needs to be 100 kilopascals. 101 kilopascals is accepted as well. And all of these solutions need to be at one mole per decimeter cubed. Moving on to part B, which is about the alkaline hydrogen oxygen fuel cell. We've got to write the half equations for the changes taking place at each electrode. So you'll notice I've written there systems two and four. So I'll just go to the table and explain that. So system two, you'll notice is the hydrogen electrode with the hydroxide ions, alkaline conditions. System four, oxygen electrode, but this one's got the OH minus ions. So alkaline conditions, we need the OH minus ions there. So which direction will the half equations go in for the electrode reactions? So Let's look at this one first. So this is the uh, more positive of the two voltages, plus 0.4 volts compared to minus 0.83. So this oxygen electrode will proceed in this direction, left to right. So we're going to write the equation like that, whereas this one will run that way because it's the less positive voltage. So you'll see there's those equations there. The overall equation, all we need to do is multiply this half equation by two so that those electrons will go up to four. So when we combine the two half equations, the uh, electrons will disappear. So that cancels down to that equation there. The standard cell potential of the fuel cell, so it's the most positive standard electrode potential minus the least, and that comes out at 1.23 volts. Part C now, state one important difference between a fuel cell and a conventional storage cell. So a fuel cell is a um, type of cell where the fuel is constantly supplied to the cell. So hydrogen, for example, is constantly fed into the cell and the cell operates. In a storage cell, so that's like you know your phone battery or your sort of triple A's that you put in TV remote, the fuel is actually stored within the cell itself. Part D now, this assumption that hydrogen oxygen fuel cells may not be carbon neutral. You could say something like fossil fuels are used to make the hydrogen. Typically, hydrogen will be um, produced by electrolyzing water. And obviously, you've got to supply electricity to do that, which will most likely come from fossil fuels. So there'll be carbon going into the atmosphere because of that. Um, the other thing you could say is fossil fuels are used to make the fuel cell itself. Okay, so moving on to a sort of tricky-ish calculation now. A student makes a cell from two half cells. The first one contains chromium metal, so chromium solid, and a solution of aqueous chromium 3 sulfate. So the important thing there is it's Cr3 plus ions with Cr metal. The second cell is made from a strip of metal X and a solution of XSO4. So we know hopefully that the sulfate ion has a two minus charge. So because it's a one to one ratio in the formula, X must be in its two plus oxidation state. The two half cells are connected together, current allowed to pass for a length of time. Right, so the chromium electrode gains that many grams in mass. So what that means is the half cell, the chromium half cell must be moving in this direction because it's gaining mass okay so it's producing chromium so this is accepting electrons and obviously because it's cr3 plus it's going to gain three electrons the electrode made from metal x loses that many grams in mass so obviously that half equation is running in that direction the metal is being lost it's being dissolved and forming the ions so we've got the two half equations 
So from that, we can get the overall cell reaction. So we need to get the electrons to cancel. So we multiply this one by two and this one by three. So there's my overall cell reaction. The whole point in deriving the overall cell reaction is because you can then say that the ratio between X to CR is three to two. So the next thing we'll do is work out how many moles of chromium was gained because obviously we know the mass, the MR obviously from the data sheet. So we can tell that 0.028 moles of chromium has been gained. And the ratio tells us that, well, three over two times those moles of X must have reacted. So that's how many moles of X has been lost. We know how many grams that equates to, so we can work out the MR of X. Mass over moles, 24.3, so X must be magnesium. Question two now, so the first part is the definition. Standard electrode potential is the EMF, elect electromotive force or voltage of a half cell, compared to the standard hydrogen electrode. And the standard conditions, we've already seen these in the previous diagram, 298 Kelvin, 100 kilopascals of pressure, 101 kilopascals is okay, in solutions at one mole per decimeter cubed. Okay, so moving on to part B now. Student sets up a standard cell based on redox systems three and four. And we've got to draw the label diagram to show how the student could set up the cell to measure the cell potential. And we've got to include the charge carriers, so that's the electrons in the circuit, joining the two half cells and label the signs of the electrodes. Right, so let's look at these numbers. Um, the most positive one is the copper 2 plus copper, so that's going to be our positive electrode. That must be the negative electrode. So the electrons are going to flow to the copper electrode. Copper 2 plus is going to gain them. So the electrons are coming from the V2 plus. It's going that direction, giving up its electrons. Copper 2 plus is gaining them. Okay, so in terms of a diagram, two beakers. I've put the V3 plus 2 plus in the left-hand side bigger. It doesn't matter which way around you do them. We need a solid platinum electrode and then a salt bridge connecting to the copper 2 plus solution, copper electrode, and there's the signs of the electrodes. Remember, so the least positive, the minus 0.26 volts for this one, so that's your negative electrode, plus 0.34 volts, so that's your positive electrode. The electrons go from the least positive to the most positive. And then another standard cell potential calculation, most positive minus least, 0 0.60 volts. Part C now, big six marker here. So we've got to explain the terms oxidizing agent and reducing agent and link that to redox reactions that can happen uh, where chromium 3 plus behaves as an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent include equations and explain why we've made our predictions. Okay, so I'm starting with the definition. Oxidizing agent is an electron acceptor. Reducing agent is an electron donor. So chromium three plus acting as an oxidizing agent. So because oxidizing agents are gaining or accepting electrons, they need to be on the left-hand side of the half equation. So if I go back to the table, um, where is it? There. Okay, so this one here. So we're looking for this reaction going in the forwards direction. CR3 plus accepting electrons. So we need something that is going to be less positive than minus 0 0.41 volts. The only system it can be is the aluminium 3 plus aluminium 1. Okay, so if we just compare these numbers, so that's more positive than that. That means CR3 plus will take electrons from the aluminium, and the aluminium will be oxidized up to Al3+. So how have I said that? So for chromium 3 plus to accept electrons, it must have a more positive electrode potential than the other half cell. In other words, systems one and two. There's the overall equation. Chromium 3 plus oxidizes aluminium up to aluminium 3 plus. And then for Cr3 plus acting as a reducing agent, so the reducing agent is the electron donor. So the CR3 plus now needs to be on the right. So go back to the table. So it's this one here. So you can see that's got quite a highly positive electrode potential already. So this needs to be less positive than the thing it's reacting with so that it'll go that way. The only one system it can be is that one. 
So that's plus 2.2 .2 volts, which is more positive than that. In other words, CR3 plus will donate electrons to the FeO4 2 minus H plus combination. So I've phrased it in a very similar way to before. So for the CR3 plus um, to donate its electrons, it must have a less positive electrode potential than the other half cell. In other words, systems five and six. So there's the overall equation before I've canceled it down. Um, the iron half equation needed to be doubled because it only had three electrons in it, whereas the chromium one had six. Um, so we doubled that equation out, added it together and then canceled the waters cancel down and so did the H plus ions. So there's the overall equation that I would have written there. And then just a final statement. In other words, CR3 plus reduces this acidified FeO4 2 minus to Fe3 plus.